intraoperative coagulopathy is frequently observed in cardiovascular surgery patients and may result in bleeding, blood products transfusion, or re-exploration for bleeding. We sat down with Dr. Pierre Tibby of Yavapai Regional Medical Center to talk about the surgeon's challenges in managing coagulopathies and the important role that point-of-care viscoelastic testing can play in establishing goal-directed therapy algorithms. My name is Pierre Tibby. I am chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at Yavapai Regional Medical Center in Prescott, Arizona. I'm the immediate past president for the Society for the Advancement of Blood Management. I've been involved with patient blood management for most of my career, almost 30 years. I've got to tell you that that is probably some of the most frustrating and painful um, parts of life as a heart surgeon, at least for me. A patient that I would operate on and I get a call in the middle of the night saying that, you know, their blood pressure is low and maybe they're bleeding from tamponade or they're just all of a sudden they start to accumulate a fair amount of blood in the chest tubes. I can't go to sleep after that. It's like the thing the pet peeve of cardiac surgery for me uh, because I'm thinking in my mind, did something come loose? Did a coagulopathy occur? And getting up in the middle of the night and reoperating on a patient and calling a family is just the last thing I, I like to do. So nevertheless, when a patient starts bleeding, having the ability to relatively accurately diagnose whether this is a coagulopathy or a surgical bleeding, it gives me some solace. So if I can show that this is a coagulopathy, I can treat the patient with the appropriate agent. If I can't show it's a coagulopathy, then I do know that I have to go in and make sure that the bleeding has stopped. I like that a lot better than just telling the nurse, well, give them this blood and this blood. And I think over the years, we have learned that indiscriminate use of blood is not benign. Operating on patients with limiting the need for blood transfusions is, results in improved patient outcomes. Because of that, and because cardiac surgery is so involved with patients who may require blood transfusions. An important aspect of that is a good patient blood management program. Patient blood management begins before the patient comes to surgery, continues intraoperatively and postoperatively. There are multiple factors that we institute in developing a good patient blood management program. These are not only evaluation of the patient, but in devices, drugs, etc. Now, one drug, one device does not make a patient blood management program and will not significantly decrease your usage of blood and blood products. Nevertheless, the Quantra device, or viscoelastic testing, is an extremely important part in the patient blood management program because it allows to evaluate coagulopathies and treat it in a very precise fashion. Well, that's always been a frustration of mine. When you come out after surgery and you tell a patient's family that their dad, let's say, uh, was bleeding a bit and we have to give him a unit of blood, patient's family usually accept that without hesitation because they say, well, you know, they had heart surgery, so it's normal that they would need blood. Whereas if you come out and you tell patients, your, your father's got some bleeding and we're taking him back to surgery, that often raises some red flags with families, being, oh, well, they missed something or the surgeon did something wrong or what have you. Nevertheless, in 
a situation where there is no coagulopathy, it's important to take a patient back and prevent them from continuing to bleed and require blood transfusions. And it's actually safer in, in those patients who have no coagulopathy to take a patient back for a re-exploration. Now, we, in order to rule out a coagulopathy, we have to have the ability to assess uh, coagulopathy quickly. Well, in the past, we've relied on our regular lab tests, which are not very specific and take a long time. When you have a patient bleeding, you want to know quickly what the actual process is for their bleeding, whether it's a coagulopathy or whether it's surgical bleeding. To rule in a coagulopathy, we have newer tests such as viscoelastic testing. In the past, without when a patient was bleeding, our basic option was shotgun therapy. We would give patients platelets, FFP, cryoprecipitate. To be able to assess the actual process for their coagulopathy is extremely important, not only in treating the patient, but in preventing unnecessary blood and blood product transfusions. In today's day and age in cardiac surgery, I think viscoelastic testing is an extremely important part of our armamentarium to deal with post-operative bleeding. We considered multiple systems that were on the market, and when I looked at the rapidity of the tests, the ease of administration of the tests, and the ease of interpretation of the tests, I felt that the newest system that's on the market, the Quantra system, was going to satisfy our needs the best. Well, right off the bat, it's extremely easy to interpret the results. It tells you exactly what the clot strength is and in most cases, what it's why if your clot strength is low, what you can attribute it to so that you know what appropriate replacement therapy you can give. Clot time results start developing within minutes on the DIALS dashboard, and you can switch to curves developing in real time. Within 15 minutes or less, you get complete coagulation results against the normal ranges validated for your patient population. Interpretation is easy. Rapidly evaluate clot time, clot time with heparin neutralization, clot time ratio, indicating the likely influence of heparin, clot stiffness, fibrinogen contribution, and platelet contribution. You can see trends up to six previous runs on a single Quantra over 48 hours. Well, it was interesting. So we brought the Quantra system in to evaluate into our operating room. Our very first case was a redo aortic and mitral valve replacement, a case that would normally uh, uh, have a significant amount of bleeding. And our initial Quantra evaluation before surgery was that the patient's platelet contribution to clot strength was low. So that already gave me a heads up that this patient may need platelets. At that time, before the case started, I ordered a unit of platelets to be given possibly after surgery. Once we had gotten our third Quantra analysis, which is after reversal of heparin and, and administration of the a and H that we had collected preoperatively, uh, I could tell that there was still a significant amount of bleeding even though I could not find any surgical bleeding. At that point, I gave my first unit of platelets. I repeated the Quantra test and that showed me that still the clot strength was low due to the, due to the platelet factor. 
I ordered two more units of platelets and gave one of the units. Within 20 to 30 minutes, we got another Quantra, and at this time, all of the values had normalized. And lo and behold, the bleeding had significantly subsided. At that point, I felt comfortable in taking the patient out of the operating room, taking that third unit of platelets that I ordered with the patient to the intensive care unit, and evaluate how things were going. Approximately an hour and a half after the patient had returned to the intensive care unit, there was no significant bleeding. We did repeat a Quantra test just to evaluate it, and in fact, it did show that the clot strength was good. I was able to return that third unit of platelets without giving it to the patient. Now, in retrospect, without viscoelastic testing, I had a bloody patient and I probably would have ordered FFP cryoplatelets and given, a, given him that shotgun therapy that many surgeons are used to when you have what appears to be a coagulo coagulopathic patient. So in retrospect, I gave two units of platelets where in the past I might have given six units of blood products. To tell you the truth, I was quite surprised. Uh, it's an extremely easy machine to operate. It's probably the only blood test that I know how to operate. And basically, you just take a small vial of blood from the patient, put it into the cartridges, put it, push it into the machine, and press the button. And that's all it takes. But at Yavapai, our perfusionists operate the Quantra in the operating room. We get real-time uh, parameters as they come right off the press. Now, we've trained our intensive care unit nurses to do it, so if I get a call in the middle of the night on a patient that was previously not bleeding, and now the patient is bleeding, and I don't know if it's uh, heparin rebound or surgical bleeding or so forth, I can tell my ICU nurse to go do a Quantra test, and within 15 minutes, she'll come back to me with the results without anybody else having to be involved. Nevertheless, I felt that a standardization of treatment is important. And we have developed an algorithm that tells anybody how to treat a particular result. So obviously, if a patient is not bleeding, no matter what test it shows, uh, there's no treatment. But if you do have bleeding and the Quantra shows a coagulopathy, According to the amount of bleeding, as well as the results of the test, we have ver in this algorithm various pathways that you can use to pinpoint and treat that particular coagulopathy, how much and how, when you repeat the Quantra test and so forth and so on. So basically, I'm making it extremely easy for anyone to appropriately treat a patient with a coagulopathy that's demonstrated by the viscoelastic testing. I've been interested in how the use of viscoelastic testing can help not only our patients but the hospital in general. Uh, and therefore, what I've done is taking blood utilization before Quantra, taking blood utilization after Quantra, where we did not use an algorithm, and then taking blood utilization after Quantra when we did start using the algorithm. We have about 100 patients in each. And uh, certainly pre versus post Quantra, I think there's a demonstrable decrease in the amount of especially blood byproducts or FFP, platelets, et cetera, that we've used when we've stayed away from shotgun therapy. Additionally, with the use of the algorithm, I believe there will be even improved uh, saving of blood products because we've got now a standardized way of treating our results.
I think most surgeons, all surgeons are familiar with the term shotgun therapy in treating, in, in treating bleeding patients. That's when a patient is bleeding and you have to stop the bleeding as quickly as possible. There's no surgical answer and you're not really quite sure why the patient is bleeding, but certainly the patient is coagulopathic. In those instances, the surgeon, in his best efforts to treat these patients, will give everything that we know that will help with a coagulopathy. That might be FFP, that might be cryo, that might be platelets, that might be blood. So that's what we call shotgun therapy. If we're able to pinpoint exactly why a patient is bleeding from a coagulopathic standpoint, then we can give the exact product that the patient may need. And we can call that a sniper attack as opposed to shotgun therapy. I believe that viscoelastic testing is extremely important in the present treatment of cardiac surgical patients vis-a-vis -a, -vis a patient blood management program. In fact, viscoelastic testing has become so important that it will be highlighted in the upcoming STS guidelines on patient blood management as a higher level of evidence is demonstrated.